the Victorian House of Horror brought to you by Moose. As I turned off the ignition outside of the old four-story Victorian-style home, I whispered, happy birthday, to myself. This day wasn't just about another year passing. It symbolized the beginning of a new chapter in my life. I gathered my belongings, a worn backpack, and slung it over my shoulder. As I approached the grand entrance, I couldn't help but be captivated by the large double wooden doors. Their dark, polished wood bore the scars of time etched with countless stories of those who had crossed this threshold before me. Nearby, a modern doorbell discreetly asserted itself. I promptly pressed the button. A surge of anxiety coursed through me as loud musical piano chimes echoed throughout the house. The melodic tones, a stark contrast to the heavy silence that had engulfed the surroundings, resonated through my very core. The door swung open to reveal a tall woman who appeared to be in her late fifties to mid-sixties. Her piercing gaze seemed to penetrate deep into my soul. For a brief moment, we stood there in silence. She asked, What do you want? Continuing the blank stare, I hesitated. I'm here about the room. My voice carried a touch of uncertainty as I was beginning to fear I somehow had the wrong address. She straightened her posture, nose tilting upwards with a slight sneer. You might say I am traditional. Week to week payments up front, the rent is 300, non-negotiable. No staying up late, no having people over, no snooping around, and I don't like loud noises. Dorothy stepped aside and ushered me upstairs to my would-be room on the second floor. The house had clearly undergone several renovations over the years. It was larger and more complex than it appeared from outside. To the immediate right of the front doorway, there was a little office that had huge monitors displaying cameras from different positions around the house. The dimly lit main staircase was directly ahead of the entry into the home. The steps were extremely short and steep, so I had to be careful with every footstep as we reached the second level. Without saying a word, she turned the key to a door, producing a tiny, shabby-looking room. The wallpaper was torn and the wooden floor looked dilapidated. The bed was small. Across from it was a wardrobe and a lamp sat on a coffee table in the corner. Dorothy seemed a bit cranky and uptight, but I thought I could handle it. Pulling me out of my daydream, she said, Dinner is at 5 p.m. If you miss it, I don't want you in the kitchen after dark. This seemed like an odd request, but I had planned to get takeout anyway. Before I could answer, she turned and headed back downstairs. This was fine with me, as I don't really like people who hover. I unslung my backpack and placed it on the coffee table and laid down on the bed. The mattress was stiff, but surprisingly comfortable. I was exhausted from the 12-hour drive and fleeing my horror show of a family. I collapsed into the respite of my dreams of tomorrow. It was the stench of decay drifting through the bedroom door that sobered me from my sleeping state. I'd never smell anything so dreadful in my life. I checked my phone. It was still early morning and the sun was just starting to rise. With no way to get back to sleep, I shot up and proceeded to stand at the bottom of the stairwell. I decided to investigate rather than cut my losses and leave. I really couldn't afford anywhere else. The scent led me to the small kitchen. It was cramped, probably about the same size as my room. The air was filled with a foul, pungent odor. I knew the source, as I had seen an open freezer sitting in the corner, filled with large, black garbage bags. Overcome with disgust and curiosity, I moved toward the freezer, reaching out to grab the top of a bag. I screamed as I felt something at the back of my head. Something wet trickled down into my left eye. It must have been blood, but I couldn't tell how bad the wound was. Anytime I tried to move, it was complete agony. Who's there? A rasp whispered out from the shadows. My still good eye started to adjust to the darkness and to my confusion. I could make out a figure of Dorothy sitting in the corner of what looked to be the basement of the ancient house. She looked very different from the larger woman I had seen seemingly moments ago, but something told me it had been a few hours. Sensing my uncertainty, we spent the next few hours talking about what happened. Dorothy told me she had been taken by this creature several years beforehand. It kept her alive and took her form, like a kind of shapeshifter. The following information was even worse news for me, as the creature drains people, like a giant bug, in order to feed harvesting on those it lures in. My head was still throbbing and I could barely see. 
but I had to escape before it became its next meal. Looking around the room, there was a bunch of old furniture, some linen in a pile, and an old boiler that looked like it barely ran. I started forming a plan. It wasn't a very good one. In fact, it might have been a terrible plan, but it was all I had at the time. After talking it over with the real Dorothy, we decided we had little other choice. I gathered enough wood and linen to start a fire, pulled off the protective cover to the boiler's electric panel. It didn't take long before a spark set it alight. The heat was intense, and smoke began pouring out and up the stairs. As the flames grew out of control, it had only been seconds, and it had already started to burn the floor of the room above. I had begun to realize just how foolish this plan was, as the creature could simply flee, leaving us trapped with no way to get out. With a horrific shriek, the creature came bursting through the basement door at enormous speeds. It jumped down the staircase and crashed into the pile of now fully engulfed furniture. Grabbing the real Dorothy, I raced as fast as I could, practically dragging her up the stairs, through the kitchen and out the front door. I could faintly hear sirens in the distance. As we ran towards the sound of safety, another piercing howl shot out from behind me. With incredible strength and speed, the creature tossed me against the front of the house. Its arm snapped around Dorothy's leg with a loud crack, and with a deafening scream of agony, she was gone, pulled off into the forest behind the property. Two fire trucks pulled into the driveway moments later, along with a police car. It was several hours before the fire was put out. All that remained of the house was the husk of an old Victorian-styled mansion. Police were puzzled at my claim and assumed a human was behind the entire ordeal. After giving them my details, I was free to go. It would take many years to get over this nightmare. I walked back to my car, I got in, and turned on the ignition.